Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Alliance Racials and how they changed from TBC over to Wrath of the Lich King. WoW's best expansion ever. Such a fun game. And it's pretty crazy. Racials have changed a lot. And then after we go through that, we're going to talk about which race is best for each class, including the Death Knight, which I'm sure you're all wondering about. So let's get started. So we're going to start with Human Racials. How did they change? Well, sword and mace specializations are both nerfed. Expertise was decreased from 5 down to 3, which isn't too big of a nerf, but still a nerf. Uh, human spirit got pretty majorly nerfed, losing 70% of its bonus. Spirit increased by 10% was changed to spirit increased by 3%. So that is quite a nerf. Perception is no longer an activated ability. It's now a passive um, and gives less detection than the activated version, of course. So I would consider this somewhat of a buff and a nerf. Always having it on is kind of nice for those who uh, forget to turn it on in the right situations. But it's also a nerf for maybe Arena, where you know that you're going to be needing it right then and there. Now, Diplomacy, a uh, great uh, racial ability, is exactly the same, which is awesome for human players. And then there's a new, completely overpowered ability called Every Man for Himself. This removes all movement impairing effects and all effects which l cause loss of control of your character. This effect shares a cooldown with sim similar effects. So your PvP Trinket, for example. Um, but basically, this is the era of Wrath of the Lich King where humans were considered a very powerful PvP race because they had two trinkets, the Everyman for himself and the PvP trinket. Of course, they do share cooldowns, but an incredible new racial ability coming for humans in Wrath of the Lich King. Let's move on to dwarves. Now, gun specialization is exactly the same, getting that 1% critical strike rating with guns. Stone form is actually nerfed, very similar to Will of the Forsaken. It will just remove um, uh, bleed, poison, and disease effects. Uh, it will not grant immunity for 8 seconds. However, it does still give that armor increase for 10 seconds. Or sorry, by 10% for 8 seconds. Uh, it's also on a 2-minute cooldown instead of a 3-minute cooldown. Um, but does not grant that immunity. It's sort of like a trinket that removes poison bleed and disease effects. Find treasure is exactly the same. Very cool. And then frost resistance is different and I would say better. Now granting 2% reduced chance for spells to hit you. In World of Warcraft, Craft resistance is calculated in a binary and non-binary way. In the binary way is does the spell hit and do damage, or does it get resisted and do no damage? The non-binary calculation is how much does the resistance mitigate? Does the spell do 10%, 20%, or 30% reduced damage? So I would say this is a buff, because now you can still max out your resistances, and you also have a racial that will now help with that binary portion of the resistance calculation, which is does the spell hit or not. So overall, uh, I would say, and this is a change for all uh, resistances, racial resistances, um, so it's not really dwarf specific, uh, but still made the, res the uh, racial better, in my opinion. Now, Night Elf is a big one. They had tons of changes, and they're really good, in my opinion. Uh, Night Elves got a lot of love here in Wrath of the Lich King. Shadow Meld was completely reworked. It's buffed incredibly so. It is now a Vanish-like ability that can be used while in combat on a two-minute cooldown. However, unlike Vanish, your threat is restored after you come back out of Shadow Meld. So it can be very helpful uh, to survive, you know, in the open world where you just need to exit combat, and it won't re-enter you when you come out it's up to you if you want to do that um, but if you do come back uh, it's not necessarily going to be a threat management tool because the threat will be restored um, so it definitely helps though uh, with dropping you know threat like stopping generating threat right letting other players catch up in your group on threat so in a way it could help with threat um, but it's amazing it's really just incredible now that it can be used in combat it's much more useful than before now you might be wondering uh, about that increased stealth effectiveness that Shadow Meld used to grant passively. Well, that is now its own passive racial called Elusiveness there at the bottom. So Night Elves do still have that effect of reducing the chance enemies have to detect you while Shadow Melded or Stealthed. So it still makes Rogues and Druids have that uh, extra benefit as well. Wisp Spirit got a 25% increased move speed buff. So it used to be 50% increased move speed, now it's 75. So that's helpful. And Quickness 
was changed from 1% dodge to 2% reduced chance to be hit. I would certainly say this is a buff because even if someone is hit capped, this racial can still cause them to miss their attack, which is very nice. Nature resistance, uh, this change is also a buff for the reasons mentioned in the dwarf frost resistant resistance section. Uh, and then let's move on for uh, the gnomes. All right, so gnomes, very similar, actually. Uh, everything is actually exactly the same, other than the arcane resistance change, uh, which is a buff. And once again, um, we talked about that in the dwarf section. All right, let's talk about Drenai. So a few things here. Uh, Drenai Shadow Resistance got that same change as all the other racial resistances, which is a buff. Gem Cutting is the same. But Heroic Presence was changed quite a bit, and it's buffed uh, very nicely. So um, if you were a spellcasting Drenai, uh, you'd get Inspiring Presence, which would increase uh, hit chance for spells by 1% for you and your party. And Heroic Presence was... Uh, regular hit chance for you and your party. Well, they've been combined in the new Wrath of the Lich King Heroic Presence, and they so it gets both spell and uh, attack hit by 1% um, for you and all party members within 30 yards. So this is a very nice buff, um, and it's uh, it's great for classes who may cast spells and, you know, attack something like a Shaman. So a very nice buff there. It's going to make Drenna even more valuable. Um, and then also Gift of the Naru was buffed greatly. It is now an instant cast heal over time, and it scales with your attack power if you're an attack power class, or your spell power if you are a spell power class, or um, either or, uh, whichever is higher if you are a shaman, for example, which could potentially have both stats very high. Uh, so you know, depending on what class you are, you'll have a different version of Gift of the Naru, uh, but it's still instant cast in all scenarios. It just scales with a different stat depending on what uh, class you are. So... Huge buffs all around for Drenai. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, makes Drenai an even better uh, race than they already were. And that's it for racial changes. Now we're going to go class by class, talking about which, uh, what is the best race for each class. So let's start with the warrior. Um, so any class on the Alliance side can be a warrior here, whether that's human, dwarf, night elf, gnome, or Drenai. Now when it comes to PvE DPS... Uh, I think that the buffs that Drenai received make them rank number one in this. Um, basically, the hit rating that they provide for themselves and their group, the self-heal is kind of nice, but really that hit rating, I think, is better than the three expertise a human would give uh, for their uh, swords and maces. Uh, but I do put humans in second place for PvE DPS. When it comes to the other races, they don't have any racial that actually helps them do more damage as a warrior. So that gnome, dwarf, or night elf, they don't really have anything that increases damage uh, for a warrior. So I put them kind of on the same levels. Um, so, yeah, and, and I would say, uh, you know, night elf has some, that decent uh, damage mitigation. So they're kind of equal to gnome with the escape artist. Could be helpful situationally in PvE. Uh, but, but dwarves just don't really have much. I guess stone skin could be situationally important, uh, important as well, but it's a stretch. Let's talk about PvP, though, which is a different story. I ranked humans at number one because of that overpowered every man for himself trinket uh, racial ability. I think that's incredible. Perception's passive, which is very helpful. They do have the sword and mace specialization as well. A lot of their racials help uh, in PvP, so human definitely top pick for PvP. Uh, I In second place, uh, there's actually a three-way tie. I thought Escape Artist is very strong and shouldn't be discounted. If you're a melee DPS in PvP, being able to get rid of immobilizations is huge. I thought Night Elves actually were pretty good. The, the Dodge, the Shadow Meld can be very good in PvP. Uh, and then the Dwarf Stone Skin, of course, removing bleed, poison, and disease effects can be very, very helpful in PvP as well. Drenai, I felt, fell short here. They don't really have an activated ability that really can turn the tide of battle. Gift of the Naru is a very nice heal, but it's not on the same level as like a Trinket that is basically like Escape Artist, Stone Form, or Every Man for himself. For tanking, I think dwarves are the best uh, for warriors because of stone skin. I think that 10% increased armor is pretty much the only defensive cooldown uh, that in on this list. I mean, Dren, I do have that self heal, but it's probably not going to be that crazy considering tanks are going to have aren't going to have a lot of attack power. 
Um, humans don't have any sort of defensive racial, I guess the spirit, but that's a stretch really actually doesn't help at all. Um, night elves actually are put in second place. Um, the, the elusiveness I think is very nice or the, sorry, quickness, which is a 2% chance, reduced chance to get hit. I think that can be very nice. Actually, that's a nice, uh, sort of defensive racial. So that's, that's okay. I put them in second and then for third, it's like a tie between like gnome and human who don't really have anything or sorry, Drenai's third. Cause they do have that self heal, but Human and gnome don't really have like tanking uh, racials. All right, moving on to the rogue. Rogues uh, can be played by any race besides Drenai. And uh, for PVE DPS, human all the way. They've got the uh, uh, sword specialization and mace specialization. Uh, pretty much no other uh, race here has any like offensive uh, racials here. When it comes to PvP, I'd say human again. Every man for himself is priceless, though I do put gnome in second for escape artist. And then in third, uh, stone skin is very helpful as well. Actually, night elf here. Um, elusiveness is nice. Quickness is nice. Shadow melt can be nice. Um, I don't know. Could, I, it could be argued, I think, dwarf, between dwarf and night elf for third place. But I definitely think human is number one pick for rogue for PvP DPS. All right, moving on to the mage, we have uh, humans, gnomes, and Drenai can all play a mage. Um, and so for PvE, I put uh, gnome at the highest. They've got that expansive mind, 5% increase intellect. However, I could see uh, Drenai coming in a close second or perhaps tied for first because of that uh, nice heroic presence 1% spell hit across the board. Humans just don't really ha bring anything to the table here for spell casting. Um, so for PVE, I'd say between Gnome and Drenai, uh, depending on which, if you're going for that spell hit or if you want that 5% intellect. For PVP, totally different story. I think human is the way to go because of every man for himself. Uh, you could also say that Gnome is a great pick as well, or perhaps even a better pick because of Escape Artist not sharing a cooldown with Trinket and also getting Expansive Mind, that 5% intellect. So it's a pretty close race between human and Gnome. Uh, but I, I, would, I personally would choose a human for every man for himself because it gets rid of everything, uh, whereas Escape Artist is only slows and immobilizes. Uh, Drenai is also you know decent, but not necessarily the best for PvP. All right, moving on to Warlock. It can be played by human or gnome for the alliance. We got a nice menagerie of demons here. So for PvE DPS, I think Gnome just wins straight up. Expansive Mind versus humans don't really have any racials that help. Uh, Gnome's kind of always been the best in slot race for Warlocks for the Alliance. For PvP, I think that switches. I would choose human for the same reasons as before. Every man for himself just being slightly better, in my opinion, than Escape Artist. Moving on to Hunter, uh, we got Dwarf, Night Elf, and Drenai. It's a pretty close race, you know, uh, Night Elves have higher base agility, but I don't think that's enough to dwarf what Drenai really bring to the table now with Heroic Presence. Do have to remember this is an extra 1% hit as well for your pet. Um, the self-heal, uh, I think Drenai Hunters are pretty great. They're probably the best in slot uh, race for uh, Hunter PvE. Dwarves do have that gun specialization, so I put them in second. That 1% extra crit, I believe, is strong. And then in third, actually, I place the Night Elves. I don't think that base... Uh, agility uh, is, is really an, enough to be better than uh, some of these other racials. So I would say Drenai, then Dwarf, then Night Elf, actually, in Wrath of the Lich King. When it comes to PvP, I've definitely put Dwarf in first place. I think Stone Skin is an incredible PvP cooldown. Uh, and then in second place, I kind of put Night Elf and Drenai tied. I think that they both have pretty powerful racials, but I do think Dwarf is the best in Wrath of the Lich King for PvP. All right, let's move on to Shaman. Uh, well, actually, we're leaving Shaman because you can only play Drenai if you are on the Alliance side. So Drenai is the only race and is the best race because it's the only one. <laughs> now, we're moving on to Priest. Now, Priest is a big one because Priest racials are going away. I just put a big X here because they're being, in Wrath of the Lich King, uh, they're removed, basically. They're being completely reworked. And I'm going to go through, basically, those changes. So... All racials that you know and love are gone for the most part. However, Desperate Prayer, which is actually on here, you can see, this is now an 11 point talent in the Holy Tree. And Holy Nova is now a base ability. And the cooldown for uh, Desperate Prayer is now reduced to 30 seconds. So if you spec into uh, the Holy Tree, you're probably going to pick this up. And then Devouring Plague, which was usually uh, in the past a undead only priest racial, is now a base ability for all priests. So rejoice, Alliance. This is pretty awesome. 
Uh, cooldown has been reduced to 30 seconds and the mana cost was greatly reduced. Now, uh, if you're like me, I used to use Inner Fire Devouring Plague because, um, Inner Focus, because it just costs so much mana. Inner Focus reduces your next spell cast by 100%. It used to cost so much mana to cast Devouring Plague. Now, mana cost greatly re reduced. It's amazing. Love it. And then Symbol of Hope, which used to be a Drenai racial, uh, which greatly increases uh, you know, mana regeneration. Uh, it's now a base ability and will now restore 5% base mana every 2 seconds for 8 seconds. So what is that? That's uh, 4 times 5. It's 20% of base mana. Wow, amazing. Renamed to Hymn of Hope. Very, very powerful priest ability now being a base ability. But everyone else's racials are gone. So things like Star Shards for Night Elves, gone. Eluna's, Eluna's, Eluna's Grace is gone. Touch of Weakness, Consume Magic, Hex of Weakness, Shadow Guard, Chastise, and Feedback. All removed from the game. Now if you ask me about this change, I think it is both good and bad because I, I kind of felt like choosing a race as a priest was such a big deal uh, for all the way up until Wrath of the Lich King. Now it's sort of just your own individual class racials, or sorry, race racials instead of your uh, specific like priest class race racials <laughs> if you know what I mean so um, let's talk about uh, what race is best for priest now it matters less much less if you ask me but still matters a little bit uh, PVE DPS I'm going to put Drenae at the top uh, heroic presence is very good 1% spell hit provided to you and your group as well as that 1% regular hit um, but typically I'd imagine your shadow priest is going to be in a group that is mana hungry uh so probably other spellcasters um when it comes to second place probably tie between night elf and human uh, because they don't really have too much but they do have that increased spirit uh, night elves um you know they don't really have too much i would say drenai is probably the only one that really benefits uh from being uh, a priest that like their racial is helping out being a priest all right, moving on to PvP, human for every man for himself. Definitely think that's the best racial. And then second place, I would say stone skin. And then uh, sort of Drenai and Night Elf don't have much. They, I mean, Drenai have self-heal. Night Elves have the uh, shadow meld, which can be helpful. Defensive cooldowns, the two of them. But uh, not really as good as every man for himself. And stone skin. When it comes to PvE healing, uh, I'm going to go again with Drenai. I think Drenai have some really great PvE racials. Heroic Presence, Gift of the Naru being a nice heal. So I'd say Drenai is probably the best PvE healer. Uh, second place, probably something like Night Elves for that threat drop. Um, maybe third, just like Human and Dwarf sort of tied around there. When it comes to PvP, um, I would say that Humans, once again, uh, every man for himself, just too good. Um, and then second place, Dwarf for Stone Skin. And then same story for Night Elf and Drenai not having crazy PvP cooldowns. Moving on to Paladin. It can be played by Human, Dwarf, and Drenai. So for PvE DPS, uh, it's, it's a close race. Humans have the sword and mace specializations. Uh, dwarves, they have higher base strength. Drenai have even higher base strength, though. Um, and I would actually say Drenai are the best, probably for that reason. They've got the highest base strength out of the three races. They also have Heroic Presence, which gives you that 1% spell and regular uh, attack uh, hit rating, hit chance. Gift of the Naru is also helpful. Uh, Drenai has some really good PvE racials, what can I say? And then um, Dwarf Stone Skin can be situationally helpful, but I put that one in third. When it comes to PvP, same story. I'd say Human number one, Dwarf number two, Drenai number three. Drenai just doesn't have that great of PvP racials, in my opinion. They're decent, just not as good as Human and Dwarf ones. When it comes to PvE, flip that. I think Drenai has great PvE racials. Heroic Presence is a big one, helping out themselves and their group. Um, for PvP, fl flipping it right back, it's pretty much the same story. Human Dwarf and then Drenai. Talking about Druid, well, there's only one class, only one race that can play the Druid class, and that is Night Elf, so no discussion needed here. Just play uh, your Night Elf when you're Druid. But Death Knight, saved the best for last. This one is uh, going to be up for a lot of debate. A lot of people, you can play any race as Death Knight. A lot of people are probably going to be playing Death Knight and wondering which race should I choose for my Death Knight. And so let's, let's talk about it. For PvE, you know, there's kind of been a com common trend here if you've watched all the way through. 
Um, Drenai have really good PvE racials, in my opinion. Heroic Presence gives them 1% spell hit and regular attack hit for them and their party. They also have Gift of the Naru, which is now a better heal than it was, and it's instant, um, than it was in uh, TBC. Those are just powerful racials, and I think that's what makes Drenai the top pick for PvE on Alliance side Death Knight. Now, number two at a close second, I would say Human. Sword and Mace specialization granting three expertise can be very helpful if you're using a, a Mace or a Sword as a Death Knight. Uh, every man for himself can be situationally uh, helpful in PvE scenarios. Um, and so I put Humans in second. And then a three-way tie for third. Now, Night Elf, Dwarves, and Gnomes all have situationally helpful racials, such as Stone Skin, Escape Artist, and Shadow Meld. Shadow Meld for threat management, Escape Artist to get, reposition yourself, and Stone Skin for pretty much the same reason. A little bit of survivability there. Um, but it, I don't think it really helps their damage as much as something like the Draenei racials or the Human racials. Moving on to PvP, it's a different story. Uh, I would say humans actually rank number one. Every man for himself carrying the human race. Such a great racial acting as a trinket with a two-minute cooldown second trinket. In second place, I'd say dwarf with stone skin. A very good racial as well. And then in third, I would say night elves. Actually, uh, sorry. I, with second place, I would put gnome. I think escape artist is probably better than stone skin. Uh, once again, as a melee class... Uh, it's very important to be able to move around and get to your opponent to make sure you're attacking them. So I'd say every man for himself because it gets rid of everything, uh, any movement impairing effects. Gnome I would put in second because uh, um, Escape Artist gets rid of immobilizations and slow effects. And then third, I would put Dwarf for the 10% armor for the uh, bleed and disease and poison removal. Poisons like crippling poison you could get rid of, um, things like that as a Dwarf. So, human number one, gnome number two, dwarf number three. Number four, I'd say night elf, shadow meld being uh, much better now in Wrath of the Lich King. Um, quickness is also very nice, 2% less chance to get hit. And then Draenei, I think, has the weakest PvP racials of them all, just a self-heal and that extra hit chance, which I think does not really uh, match up against uh, some of the other racials of these classes. So, human number one for PvP, death knight. Now for tanking, it's different once again. In first place, I'd say Dwarf. Uh, I think Stone Skin is just the best race, racial here out of all of them for tanks. It was a close race, though. I mean, a 10% 8-second um, increase in armor I think is very nice. Uh, but I also do think that a 2% less chance to be hit. Passive, always on for a Night Elf, is very powerful as well. So it was, a, it was a tough choice, and honestly, up to your preference. If you don't want to be a dwarf, having to activate stone skin, you know, during uh, pressure situations, you just want to have that passive on all the time, I'd say go Night Elf, Death Knight, Tank, and uh, it'll be still be a pretty strong decision, in my opinion. Um, Shadow Meld's not really going to help, I think, as a tank. I don't think you'd want to drop, you know, like, <laughs> combat like that to the next person. Um, but, I, yeah, I think Night Elf is still a good, a good choice. Um, and then in third place, I actually put Human. For the sword and mace specialization expertise, you don't want to get parried as a tank for that parry haste that you would give the uh, the target. Uh, expertise decreases the chance that you will be dodged or parried, so could be helpful there. And then I would say uh, Drenai for the nice hit rating can always help generate threat. Self heal if Gift of the Naru is nice. And then Gnome doesn't really have much except Escape Artist, which isn't super good for tanks. It's helpful, I acknowledge that, but not as good as the other racials. And that, my friends, wraps up our Alliance Race Picking Guide. We've learned all about all the racials that changed. We learned all about which race is the best for each class, in my opinion. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. Please leave them below in the comment section below. If you liked this guide, well, there's more like it coming, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. My name is Toy House, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.